So particularly with quantum, there's like you're asked about quantum today. So quantum today, there's what that's what we call a lot of things that are quantum inspired or maybe quantum adjacent. So for example, like there's a component of DocuSign that uses uh, quantum enabled random number generation. Um, I'm still learning about the mechanics of this, but like your flash drives, that operates with kind of a side effect of like this thing called quantum tunneling that makes like flash memory possible. Nobody has to be a quantum expert to use DocuSign or to use a flash drive, right? So you kind of have that. You also have this thing called quantum annealing. And that's when you don't have any quantum hardware and you're able to run quantum simulations, et cetera, like on your MacBook. So like that's the kind of stuff that we have today. And the reason I think this is important to talk about is because there's this thing around quantum supremacy or quantum advantage. And that's when you have enough qubits, and I can talk a little bit about like in layman's terms that I've learned those to be, to basically get to this level of compute power, right? Um, there's this concept of Q-Day. This is where quantum computers become strong enough to run everything that they need to to break Shor's algorithm and therefore break all the primary encryption of the entire internet. So that's called Q-Day. 